Hi Year 10, this is your lesson 8 of your summer term 2 uh, topic. Today we are going to be looking at score reading and Indian Raga. You will need with you uh, your workbook, your pen, and it might be useful to have some coloured pens with you as well. For today's lesson, we're going to be looking, as I said, at score reading and Indian Raga. Uh, I'd like you to listen and analyse a new genre of music. We've been doing this for now for a couple of weeks, so you should be really confident with this by now. Uh, I'd also like you to feel more confident with score reading. I know we spent a lot of time in class looking at this, uh, but there are still ways that you can improve and to be able to understand the key features of Indian Raga. You're used to these do nows now, it's our listening diary, but today's piece is going to be a piece um, of Bangra by Punjabi NC. Now, you may think this is quite a strange genre to be looking at today, um, but the reason for this is ultimately it has come up in past GCSE uh, exams, and therefore I think it'd be a good thing for us to look at style wise. Um, the piece today I'd like to look at is Morni Bale Bale. This piece uh, I'd like you to look at and listen to, but be focusing mainly on the tempo, the structure, the instrumentation, pitch and dynamics, as you have done in the past. As a little bit of a, an extension to that today, I'd like you to start making your own judgment about these genres. So do you like this style of music or this genre? Why or why not? And make sure to back up your response with real musical reasons. You can't just say, because I liked it. Pause the video now. Uh, the link to Punjabi MC's track will be in the description. Please open that in a new tab and write down your ideas. Press pause now. Moving on to score reading, uh, we have two options for this section of today's lesson. Option one is focus on sound, um, which is the application that we've been given access to for this coming year. On there, you'll see that I've set you a lesson on score reading um, and that is interactive and it will make sure that you listen, follow scores and are able to understand how to read them, but also how to read uh, small and large scores at the same time. Um, please make sure to use the link that is on the screen now. If you have issues with logging into Focus on Sound or you can't navigate your way around it, please email me in the first instance. Um, I'll be able to resort out passwords, I'll be able to resort out anything that you need, so please just get in touch. If for any reason I'm not getting back to you, you can't access Focus on Sound or there's some technical issues, I'd like you to use option two. So using the score in your workbook, you'll see that for activity 4.2, uh, there is actually a score of the Prince of Denmark March. Um, on that score, I would like you to please find as many of the following things uh, as you can. And I mean multiple versions of the same thing. It might be that you want to give each of them a different colour uh, so that you can identify and quickly see on your score which ones you've identified. Personally, that's what I'm going to be doing on the next slide uh, as I go through a couple of them. Obviously, utilise as, as much of the time as possible, but I would also listen to the piece as well. Uh, the Trumpets March, um, it's for a trumpet, funnily enough, uh, the Prince of Denmark March. Please make sure that you are listening to it as well. Um, it's always good to do that. Pause the video here uh, if you need to for that option. Just a few answers to help you out then. Um, obviously, I'm doing this on a computer that's kind of not great, so I'm only going to do a couple of them. Um, top line here uh, is mainly the trumpet melody uh, that you hear, you heard, and then obviously this is the accompaniment. Now, this is what we call a short score. Okay, you can see that it's ultimately just the two lines here. Other times that you could see that is sometimes this could be a piano score. So it's got the um, the right hand part at the top and the left hand part at the bottom. Just so that you've got some ideas of uh, what these things look like. OK, um, number one, a crotchet, remember, is our one beat note and it looks like that. Remember, there's you can choose all of these in the next couple of bars as well. Uh, a quaver, if I just go backwards. A little bit. You can see a quaver there. 
Our quaver, remember, is our half beat note. Okay, this is a bit of a tough one. I was just ask, actually asking you to just write onto this or any instruments that you could hear. So for this top line, you could say that you heard a trumpet. Okay, for number three, I'm not expecting you to have tried to find that on the score. And if you did, well done. Um, but don't worry. Tempo markings. This is me being really tricky. There aren't any on this score. Um, this was the whole point. I wanted to see whether you could notice that normally a tempo marking would be around here or potentially could be at the start here of a new section and same here. These are just these little things here are just saying new section. OK, moving on to our key signature. Remember, always comes at the start of each line and this tells me two sharps from what we learnt last lesson this piece is in D major. Now trills these ones are a little bit funny sometimes they might be written like that but sometimes they might also be written as just TR above um, the note that's written. So look out for those that a couple of ways of writing that on a score. Obviously, this is something that you need to be knowing okay, as you're going forward, because melodic devices are key in the GCSE. OK, repeat marks. OK, two dots tell me that I'm to go backwards to the beginning. So that's an end repeat mark. OK. And then crotchet rest. Can you find any crotchet rests on there? I found one straight away right in front of me. That's a really bad drawing of it. Apologies. Go for that one. I hope that your score is covered in lots of different colours or lots of different annotations. Uh, if you've missed anything or you didn't quite know how something looks, please make sure to look it up uh, and go through onto the next section. So looking at Indian Raga, now this is a new piece of, of um, new genre, sorry, of music that you haven't looked at. We hinted towards it with Bangra when we looked at that in lesson four. But today I would like us to look at the style from North India, which is uh, Hindu um, which is classical music from Northern India. Now, similar to quite a few other styles that we have looked at, it is passed on by oral tradition. So that is a student learning and imitating and memorizing um, patterns of notes in this style, in this instance, sorry, raga, learn from their teacher. Uh, this is known as a master student tradition um, and most <clears throat> Indian classical music is based on a combination of rag, which is the melodic form, tal, which is a rhythm rhythmic form, and drone, which is sustained notes. If I talk through that too quickly, pause the video now so that you can make sure that you get this information down for activity 7.4. Moving on to looking at raga more specifically. So raga are patterns of notes that are slightly different to um, our Western scales that we have used. They use this um, raga to build their melodies through improvisation. Um, it will often be a particular ascending and descending pattern, uh, as you can see an example here. Um, which is created of a monsoon raga um, and it often uses a system known as uh, saram which is the naming of the notes which you can see underneath the tonic or the ground note okay so the tonic is this one here is the first note of the scale please make sure that you know what that is okay the tonic of any scale two other important notes for you to understand are the pa and the re here is just a little sound of how that rug dash will sound. Moving on to the tala. The tala or the tala is a repeating rhythm uh, usually played um, by the table, which is the, the collection of percussion instruments. It usually has between 6 and 16 beats, uh, and the first beat of the cycle is known as the psalm. It marks the beginning and ends of improvisations, so it's often accented. 
The tin tile is the most common tile, which remember is a rhythmic pattern. Um, it has the following characteristics. So it has 16 beats made up of four plus four plus four plus four. And it has four sections that begin on the first, fifth, ninth and 13th beats. It's interesting to look at how those are not regular uh, sections. A drone is a note that's held and is often used in Indian Raga. We'll be coming back to drones in a second, but they are either a repeated or a consistent note throughout a passage of music, and it often uses that same tonic of the sa that we mentioned before. Moving on to then the instrumentation. Now, this is where there's going to be quite a lot of information that you haven't seen before. I would advise at some points pausing this so that you can go away and also make sure that you know exactly how they sound. You will be doing that on Focus on Sound in a second, but please make sure that you do understand what they look like and how they sound by the end of this lesson. So if we're looking at the instrumentation from um, Indian Raga, the North Indian classical musical um, ensembles have only a handful of players. They aren't made up of lots of people uh, like Gamelan was that you saw recently. They're usually made up of a soloist, a percussion and a drone. So if we were to look at some of the melodic solo instruments that you could use, you could have a sitar, a sarod, a sarangi, an esraj and a, or a bansuri. Now, with each of those, they have different characteristics. I'm not going to talk through them now because I've tried to lay it out quite simply on here. If you have any questions, please make sure to email me and I'll be going on to the next lot of instrumentation in a second. Pause the video now so that you can understand a little bit more about each of those tile types of instruments. Looking then at the percussion and the drone sections. So the drone instruments, the tampura is a string instrument, uh, but has fewer strings. It only usually has four strings. I have seen it sometimes where it has uh, six, but it usually has four um, and it has no frets on it. So that is where you would be able to understand where to put your hand. Uh, unlike the sitar, it really plays very simple and repetitive music. The harmonium is a reed organ, um, which has its keyboard on top uh, and has a range of between two to three octaves. That's really quite limited if you think about how big a normal standard keyboard in Western music is. Um, two to three octaves is very, very small. If we're looking at the tabla, this is now the percussion section of um, the ensemble. So the tabla are a pair of small drums placed side by side. Um, on the floor in front of the player. So they will often be there to often keep the beat, but sometimes they will interact with the soloist and then themselves have some short solos. Now, the smaller drum is known as the diam, which means right, um, and it is tuned to the sar and it's played with the fingertips on the right hand. Hence why the diam means right, you play it with your right hand and it's quite high in pitch. The larger drum is known as the bayam, which means left, uh, and it's played with the left hand, funnily enough, and it's played with the heel of the hand, which is pressed into the drum to change the pitch. Um, some strokes are often open, so they're allowed to ring uh, and to sustain and carry on, and others are closed and they're dampened. Please pause the video now and make sure that you know everything that you need to about the instrumentation in Indian Raga. So your options then for the rest of this lesson are to either complete the lesson set for you on Focus on Sound around Indian Raga. Um, just a reminder that the website for the application is there. Please make sure to log in. If you have any issues, please get in touch with Miss Ogden as quickly as you possibly can. If you either can't access that or I've not got back to you, apologies in advance if that's the case, um, I'd like you to create a poster for a year seven pupil on Indian Raga. I'd like it to be as detailed as possible and could you please add some questions that they'd have to answer? Try and make it as interactive as you possibly can. What I'd like you to do is end the video now and use the rest of today's lesson time on activities 7.5 and 7.6. Thanks very much, everybody. Please make sure to subscribe so you see when the next video comes up and I'll speak to you all soon. Bye.